What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marine. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Click this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now here in my hands I have the Sea Life Sport Diver Camera Housing. And I've had it for about three months now and I wanted to make sure I had a good understanding of how it operated and just how easy it was going to be to operate before I tried to make a review on it. But the cool thing about the Sport Diver Housing is you can use an Android or an iPhone with it. And I've got an iPhone XS Max here that's mine, and that's what I've been using it. As a matter of fact, the last few videos you guys have seen was filmed with this iPhone in this housing. So with that being said, let's take a quick look at it. I'm actually going to have my daughter show you how easy it is to set it up and to get it ready to use. I'm going to run you through some of the features, and then I'm also going to run you through some of the cons that I wasn't too impressed with. All right, Tessa, show everybody just how easy it is to set up the Sea Life housing. All right, so we're going to go to the Sea Life app, and it's going to show the housing charge and the phone charge. Right now, it shows the phone charge and the housing charge. But So we're going to unlock this so we can get the housing charge and get it connected. Now we're going to place it in. Here we go. Now we're going to lock it back, and right here we're going to unscrew this and pump this in until it says good. Alright. There we go. Good. Then we're going to wait three minutes. Okay. Until it's done. We're just going to wait until it's done. Make sure there's no leak. Alright guys, now you can see it is almost done pumping. So when it's done, we're going to go through the modes once just to make sure it's okay. Make sure there's no leaks or anything. Waterproof seal is good. So let's go through all the modes and see how we do. Alright guys. Now that it's done, we're ready to go diving. All right, guys, so now that Miss Tessa's got it all boxed up, ready to go for us here, we're going to take a quick look at all the features real quick, and then I'll take you underwater with it and show you just how easy it is uh, to use as well. Here on the front, you're going to have a red filter that actually comes with it, which is really neat. Um, the red filter in fresh water or even in salt water, if it's really clear, is not necessarily needed till you get below about 20 to 25 feet, but having it on there is very easy to use. You just simply snap it on. Uh, one of the cons I did find with this, it will trap some air in here so my suggestion is is jump in as soon as you jump in take the filter off snap it back on let all that air out and you should be good to go you've got your vacuum port up here at the top that's where uh, miss tessa used a little vacuum pump to pump all the air out it's what gives you your airtight seal and of course you have your shutter button as well Flipping it over here on the back, first thing you'll notice is the bolt snap now this does not come with a bolt snap i tied this on uh, separately because I wanted to be able to clip the camera off. It does come with a lanyard, a uh, little lanyard that goes through it. I wasn't too impressed with it, but I did tie on a bolt snap, so don't think that you're going to be getting this with it. Um, this is something you're going to have to get separate. The locking device for the camera itself is pretty self-explanatory. you got a little lock button here. You just press it in. You can lock and unlock. Um, makes it very easy to take the camera in and out. You gonna, are going to have four buttons here on the side, a mode button, air up, air down, and OK. That corresponds with your icons over here on the left, which is camera mode, video mode, settings, and of course playback. And you simply just scroll through by hitting the uh, mode button. The playback is probably one of my favorite parts um, because I can actually go back and play back some of the footage with it. And you're probably going to see some footage on here for, from some of our previous videos. Like I said, I've had this camera for about three months now, or this housing, and we've put it to the test. We've done a lot of filming with it. So some of our previous YouTube videos was actually filmed with this phone. 
and with this housing here. But that playback function is probably one of my coolest features on here. Over here on the right, you're going to see two indicators. This is a phone battery indicator and a housing indicator. Since this is ran through an app, it's really neat that you can tell the charge of both the housing and the phone. And in my experience, if you want this to last a very long time, put your phone in airplane mode. It definitely makes everything a lot smoother and it makes your battery last a lot longer. Now you will notice there is a red tint to it. That's simply because we have this red filter on. If I take the red filter off now you'll see that it's crystal clear. So that's why it's got that red tint because of that filter. Going through now the settings, I can go from the picture mode where I can take a picture, I can go to the video mode, um, and when you hit the shutter button on the video mode here at the bottom, it'll show that it's recording. Then you simply hit the shutter button again, it stops recording. But moving on down to settings, you can go in, you can change your focus, your white balance, your tint. Uh, you can change a whole slew of different things in your settings. And it's pretty self-explanatory how to set up a camera system. Uh, if you're already familiar with the C-Life camera systems, you just basically do the same thing that you would with them. Um, the bottom of it does have mounting brackets here that'll fit a standard uh, quarter inch screw, so pretty much any camera mount on the market you can use. If you're going to be using a tray with a light source and all that, you can screw it right in as well. Um, I didn't really need that. We just got back from Cosmel and I didn't need that light source of that tray. I did take a flashlight with me. Uh, when my daughter was going through a shipwreck, I just turned on my flashlight and it, it worked very well for that as well. But you can, you can set this camera system up just like any other camera system. You can mount whatever lights or trays or anything else that you need. If you need flashes or strobes, you can set it up uh, just like that as well. But with that being said, let's go take this thing in the water and let's see some of the good footage we can get with it. Alright Tessa, show everybody just how easy it is to take it out of the housing. Okay, first we're going to unscrew this. Then we're going to take this to the side and get all the air out of it. Leak detected it said. Now we're going to unlock it. Get the phone out. We're gonna turn off the housing. We're gonna take this out. So we don't need it right now. Then we're gonna shut it back and lock it. And take everything out. And that's how you do it, folks. All right, guys, there you go. That's my review of the Sea Life Sport Diver camera housing. What are my final thoughts on this? Well, 
I like it. I really do. I think it's very easy to use. My 10-year-old was able to pick it up and understand how to use it. Uh, she was able to set it up and, and do everything on her own. I didn't really have to do much to help her out there. What are some of the flaws, though, and, and some of the things that I'm just not too keen on? One is if your battery on your phone or if the battery on the housing is not up good enough, let's say higher than 33%, you do run the risk of it losing connection with the app. Now, there is a go around to that. If you find yourself in a situation where you don't have enough battery power for the housing itself um, and you don't have that connection, one of the things that you can do is put your phone in camera mode. Go ahead and put it in the video if you're going to do videos or whatnot and start the video, seal it in the housing, pump it in, pump it in more than what you probably normally would, you're going to lose functionality of the housing as far as the buttons go, but you'll still be able to operate, record underwater, and then you can screenshot images and stuff like that. So that's a neat little feature that I'm sure wasn't intended here, but if you find yourself in a situation where the battery of the housing's not good enough and you can't get that connection with the app, then of course you can still do the go around there. But the battery, you've got to have at least, say, 33% battery power on the housing itself for that connection to be made. And the same goes for the phone, too. If your phone's below 33%, the likelihood of it staying connected is going to be slim to none. Another con to it that I wasn't too crazy about is just how long it takes to wait to do your leak test on here. So after you vacuum all the air out, and you see that needle go to OK, it's three and a half minutes wait. And it doesn't seem like a lot of time, but if you're in between dives and you're ready to jump in and you're having to change phones or whatnot, three and a half minutes is a long time. Now, take what we just did in Cosmail. We had about 30-minute boat rides from where we were getting in the water at to where we were actually making a dive. That means I had to set this camera up and wait three and a half minutes to make sure it was OK. Then I got on the boat. Then I rode 30 minutes and the camera's just sitting here running. No, it's not recording, it's not taking screenshots, but it is still running. That's running a lot of battery power that you wouldn't normally have to use. So I think that three and a half minute time that you need to wait is a long time. Why does that make a problem when you're on a boat? Well, if you're going up and down in the waves and you're moving and you're already wet because you've already made your first dive, trying to keep all the moisture out of the housing can be difficult. So it's best that you do it on land before you ever get on a boat. But other than that, a scale of 1 to 10, I would definitely give this about an 8.5 to a 9. Even though those two flaws are in there, I think it's a great camera source for the price point of only $299, at least at the time of this video. $299 is a great system because you're getting a housing that can grow with you. This will fit multiple iPhones. It'll fit multiple Droid phones. And if you change phones, you can still use the housing. You don't have to go out and buy a new housing. But all in all, I'd give it about an 8.5 to a 9, and I think it's a great system for you as well. But guys, if you enjoyed this review, give me a big thumbs up. Definitely share it. If you got any questions on it, drop me a comment down below, and I'll try to answer it the best I can. But as always, guys, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Pin us on Pinterest. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business.